but all right, there we go. <laughs> Again, repeating, Cincinnati on its way. Bearcats will have head coach Mick Cronin, junior Jaron Cumberland, senior Justin Jennifer, uh, after which will be followed by uh, SMU. Mustangs will have coach Tim Jankovic uh, and their three seniors, uh, Jamal McMurray, Jere Foster, Nat Dixon. Uh, Cincinnati advances to Saturday's semifinal round. Bearcats will face the winner of tonight's second quarter final between Wichita State and Temple. Tomorrow's semifinal game will be at 4 p.m. Central Time, 5 p.m. Eastern, televised on ESPN2. Uh, entering tonight's game, uh, Cincinnati and SMU had combined to win 13 of their last 15 games in the American Championship. Bearcats improved to seven and four all time in the tournament. They've won six of their last seven. Cincinnati will be making its fourth appearance overall and their third straight appearance in the semifinal round. Cincinnati is two and one in their previous semifinal games. Cincinnati now has won its last five games as the higher seed in the tournament. Bearcats eliminated SMU from the tournament for the second straight season. Uh, Cincinnati now two and one against SMU in this tournament. Jaron Cumberland for Cincinnati had eight assists, matches the most by a Cincinnati player in its American tournament games. Uh, he also had eight against SMU last year. And the loss for SMU drops the uh, Mustangs to eight and three all time in the American championship. All right, Cincinnati is here, uh, joined by Coach Mick Cronin, uh, Junior Jaron Cumberland, and Senior Justin Jennifer. Uh, we'll begin with an opening statement from Coach Cronin, then we'll open it up for questions. Well, I want to congratulate SMU. I thought their effort tonight was tremendous. Uh, they've been a couple of years with uh, decimated injuries. You know, we played them last year in this tournament. Shake Milton didn't play. We played him this year both times. Jeray Foster didn't play during the regular season. Uh, just happy to see him back out there. And uh, they've been through a lot playing shorthanded. So I knew after watching them play last night, it was going to be a tough game. Uh, them at full strength, Coach Jank does a great job. And uh, they got five guys that play together on offense. They can all shoot. They share the ball. They all play smart. They play to their strengths. The drivers drive it. The shooters shoot it. And then they can make guarded shots. And teams that can make guarded shots, are, yeah, they're, they're dangerous. It, you can play great team defense. The guy just jumps up and, and makes, makes a, really a pro shot because pros have to take those shots with the short shot clock. So really proud of our effort. We had to win with offense tonight. And uh, our passing was excellent, 15 assists to eight turnovers. And uh, obviously, these two guys with me made big time plays, which they've been doing all year. And I thought Trey Scott, uh, was, who's not here with us, was probably the key to the game. We're down 29 21. And he started imposing his physical will on the game. Uh, he looked like number five, Justin Jackson, who used to play f for Cincinnati. And I've uh, been trying to challenge him to, to embody Justin. And uh, his effort was awesome. His effort, his effort on the glass, and he had 17 and 12 tonight. So I thought he really changed the game for us. And then obviously, Jaron does a great job closing it out. He's been doing it all year for us. Take questions for coach or the student athletes. Raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you, please. Questions? 
over here. Justin, what was it in that first half that, that was able to kind of get you going and, and help you propel the offense for the first 20, 25 minutes? Um, just being ready to shoot. Um, coach always emphasizes, you know, everybody being ready to shoot and, you know, locking in and shooting the ball. And my teammates did an amazing job of, uh, you know, getting, getting in the paint and drawing the defense so I can get open shots. You know, it's kudos to Ted for this because he got me a lot of shots today. <laughs> Same over here. Jaren, I know you pride yourself on passing a lot. So the eight assists tonight, what does that mean for you just to you know get guys good looks? Um, it means a lot. Actually, I knew Justin. Uh, I knew that uh, like SMU was going to help off of me. Well, help off of them. And I knew they would be open. And I was just, I knew Coach was telling me all week to find an open guy and we got to get guys open shots. So eight assists, I mean, I'm happy about it. Go over here to the left. Justin, you had a rough day on, on senior day. You, you come out and, and you don't miss tonight. And the momentum is so big. Just tell me about that shot as it goes in. How, how are you feeling? Uh, it feels great when it goes in. You know, I, I always have to get on, I get on myself for missing shots. And, you know, today it was going in. Today was my day. You know, it looked like I didn't miss today. And, you know, you did. Perfect games, perfect games don't happen like that. You know, it don't happen like happen often. So, you know, coming in from, you know, my senior night, I didn't make any shots. And coming in and making all my shots today is just, you know, shooting comes and goes. Coach always emphasizes that as well. You know, shooting comes and goes. But as, as long as we control our effort, you know, that's what's going to win us games. Coach, how much of a challenge do they present because you can play great defense on them for 29 seconds and they have a couple guys that can just step up and hit shots? Is it difficult to keep that intensity up when they do that? We, 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 I will tell you, I give our kids credit, you know, Darren and Antoine, I mean, we, we were adjusting the entire game, trying to figure out different things. You know, we, talking with the guys, you know, these two guys made some things happen on their own uh, defensively in the second half trying to take a few things away that SMU was doing to us. Because if you don't switch and, and you double the pick and roll, the guy they have popping is Isaiah Mike or Ethan Shagwar. They're both great shooters. Uh, so we're trying to control who ended up on defense in the one-on-one. We knew they were going to end up in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So we were trying to dictate at least to get a guard defending that guy so Nasir could at least rebound. Because if he's defending the guy going one-on-one, -on -one, then it takes him, eliminates him from the defensive glass. So we changed defenses quite a bit. We actually uh, went straight man in the first half. We were down eight uh, and just tried to continue to adjust. But the, the guys did a great job communicating with it. But I thought the key to the game, they really kept shooting the same percentage. We started limiting them to one shot was the key to the game, our defensive rebounding. Uh, Jaron, SMU kept it relatively close, or really close, up until about two minutes left. What would you say it says about the composure of the team not to be rattled by that and to be able to still pull away at the end? Um, I would just say the guys that we had from last year and the people, like, people from the bench that started this year, they really stepped up and coach told us we just got to keep her uh, calm. We got to stay calm and just do what we had to do to win games. Because at the end of the, at the final score, that's the only thing that matters. Other questions? I'll stay over here to the left. I know you have to watch uh, Temple and Wichita State here, but uh, the first two games, are you surprised that they were blowouts, the uh, Houston uh, game and then Memphis, the home team, obviously has a, a lot going for them? Well, Houston... To me, Houston's one of the best five teams in the country. Uh, you know, our league does – if you watch SMU play tonight at full strength and realize that they were the 10 seed in this tournament, that ought to tell you how good the American Conference is this year. And for Houston to be 29-2, and two, I thought this year going into the year 14-4 and four would tie for the league. I can't believe they went 16-2. and two. That's how good they are. They're, they're an elite basketball team. So anything they do doesn't surprise me. You know, Memphis is at home, 
and you know, this less so much about this as matchup, Scott. You know, they, they beat Central Florida 20 the time they played here before. You know, the only two teams that beat Memphis in this building all year, Tennessee, who's been in top five all year, and Cincinnati. So they're, they're an elite home team. So it doesn't surprise me at all how well they played today. One or two more? Everybody good? See none. Cincinnati, thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Okay, SMU is on its way. A slight change to their lineup. They will have uh, Coach Tim Jankovic uh, and seniors Jamal McMurray and Jare Foster. Okay, SMU is here. Again, we're joined by Coach Tim Jankovic, uh, Senior Jamal McMurray, Senior Jare Foster. Uh, Coach, we can begin with an opening statement, and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, just that uh, the last game of the year is uh, always the hardest, you know, uh, unless you happen to be that one team that is really, really happy at the end of the year. It's it's uh, hard, you know, the season ends, but, but probably hardest because you uh, have to say goodbye to people that you spend a lot of time with and that you love and that you respect and you don't get to be around on a daily basis anymore. So for me, uh, last games of the season are really very sad. That's that's uh, 
the long and the short of it. I could dig into how many rebounds and free throws and this and that, but right now I'm not all that interested in that. I'm just the feeling of uh, the disappointment um, for our team, for our seniors, and uh, I, don't, I don't know. We I think if we got in a contest of a, of a team that was faced with the most adversity in history, I think we could. I think we could be a player in that. And that's why I respect these guys so much. Nobody on the outside has any idea what what they went through, what we went through on a daily basis, and for them to keep fighting and fighting and fighting and never giving in, I just I really respect them. We'll take questions for coach of the student athletes. Dre, it's been a tough two seasons for you. Now that's finally all over, can you kind of put things in perspective and kind of recap it? Uh, I've been blessed to have this opportunity. Uh, my four years here have been amazing with amazing people, amazing coaching staff, amazing teammates, amazing support. Uh, couldn't ask to, to be anywhere else. You know, the past two years is were, were really hard for me. But I mean, you got to run with the punches, you know, and I just tried to do my best to, to make the best out of it. You know, I didn't ask for the past two seasons to happen. I didn't ask to have a post. A, no postseason my freshman year, you know. I didn't ask for these things to happen, but uh, as a man and, and growing up into a man, you have to learn how to how to uh, find the best route to, to get through these things and, and to continue to push forward. And that's all I pretty much did. So uh, it's just been a blessing. I'm just glad that I finished. You know, that was the hardest thing. You know, in the middle of all of it, you just kind of don't know what you want to do, confused, just it's a hard time. But, you know, I finished the race. And I finish it for my teammates and my coaches and, and everybody that, that supports me. Uh, now that the season's over, too, can you go into a little bit more detail about your knee injury? Or? Uh, it's not too much. I can't go into too much detail. But uh, moving forward, I know I, I do want to continue to play basketball. Uh, just going to see where it takes me. You know, I'm blessed to still be moving and, and playing. So uh, I'm going to take it and run with it. Taking it around with it. Over here to the left. Coach Shaw had stayed with them up until the final few minutes, had done a good job with the game plan. What changed? What worked early? What changed in those last few minutes? Oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I give them a lot of credit. They, they hit a lot of shots that maybe they wouldn't normally make you know and uh, I give them credit for that but they just continued to shoot the ball we did a fantastic job the first half rebounding I think they had four offensive rebounds four or five the first half which we would take in every half against Cincinnati uh, I think we wore down um, they they bring in waves particularly their, their front line they bring guys in waves they keep them fresh we're leaving our guys out there an awful long time, and I totally understand that. Uh, you know, they, they got a lot of offensive rebounds the second half, and uh, Cumberland played great down the stretch. He was tough to score. He, he made baskets. He made fouls. Uh, but, but I don't fault. I don't fault anything that we did. It was uh, – they're a great team. Um, there's nothing negative in my mind. It just uh, – you know, the last three or four minutes, what, what sticks with me is they stretched the lead on us. We had, uh, you know, a lot going against us at that time, and we fought our way back. I want to say, what, down one, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure we tied or took the lead, but we fought right back to down one, gave ourselves another chance, and, uh, you know, we couldn't finish. Um, not as an excuse, but, but I know that we got some guys on fumes out there. And, and uh, again, I don't mean that as an excuse, but it's tough. It's tough to have the – you know, the same bounce you do in the last three or four minutes when some guys are playing as many as they are. And, and I want to say, in case I don't get a chance, that, uh, you know, Dre is, Dre's been through maybe more. I've, I've coached over 30-some years. Dre's been through more than anybody I've ever coached by 100 times. Uh, his, his freshman year, he finds out there's no postseason. There's a probation. We're not going postseason. Can you imagine? For, for nothing he did, he just happened in September to find that out. His next year goes great. He was great. We win a ton of games. It's fantastic. Lots of great things happen. The next year starts. 
we're right back in it. We're in position in February 1st. We're another NCAA team. We're going to try to make a run at another championship, and then, boom, he tears his ACL. Shake goes down. Everett goes down. Others go down. The season goes down. And now he's up in, an, in his second, uh, second rehab, second ACL of his life, his senior year of high school. So now he's staring down that barrel. This season starts. We have optimism, but he can't play at the beginning. And, uh, you know, so he doesn't practice all through the beginning. Finally gets back. You saw what happened when he came back to our team. I think we won eight out of ten. We, uh, we started the league great. We looked like a, a contender. And lo and behold, he gets hurt in the Houston game. I mean, I don't, I don't know anybody that's gone through all that. And, and I look at Jamal. Jamal chooses another school uh, early on. Uh, you know, there's firings. There's allegations. There's all kinds of a mess that, that he didn't sign up for. And so he leaves the school, and he works like crazy, and he does a lot of academic work, and he comes to us and with the hopes to play on a great team, the teams that we had that Jure played on two years ago. And sure enough, the year starts out fantastic, and he gets eligible, and he helps us, and all of a sudden we're, we're winning like crazy. We have three top 15 wins, and it's rolling, and the next thing you know, he looks beside him, and Jure's out and shakes out and Everett's out, and we're down two scholarships or three, I forget, for, for – sanctions and that's he didn't do anything you know he, he was just he was hoping to play on a great team and then again this year we, we we're down to begin with with the sanctions and we get injuries and a bunch of injuries and and and, and what I feel for him what bothers me is he, he for me has turned into into a winner you know and and he deserves to win I, I wanted him to play in an NCAA tournament um, I want him to experience that. He should have played in three or four of them, you know, and uh, that's a lot of stuff. You know, the, you don't get 17 careers. A coach gets many more years. I, I'm, I'm, I've been doing this a long time. I've had a lot of great things happen to me. I don't, I don't, I don't need that like they need that. Um, they just get one, and uh, I'm just that's, – that's what hurts me so much that they're going to be leaving and we don't have another chance together to do all the things that I believe that could have been done had it not been for a lot of circumstances that none of us had any control over. Take one or two more. Jamal, after a big win last night and a really close competitive game tonight, can you just describe what that experience was like for you? Um, it, was a, it was a great experience. Um, I was just, I'm just blessed to, to be a part of a, a great team. Um, I still think we are a great team. We, we, like, like Coach said, we went through a lot of stuff this year, but we, we never made excuses. We fought and fought and fought, and, and a lot of people counted us out, especially early in the first round, I'm sure, and we came out and fought again and got a win against Tulsa, against a very great team. And then we came out, came out tonight and, and, and really fought hard and, and put ourselves in position to win a game, and you know, a few things happened during the game that didn't go our way. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a really blessed individual to be a part of basketball college basketball period. And I just want to thank Coach Jank for giving me the opportunity and giving me the chance to, to, to do what I do best, and that's play basketball. And I'm just, I'm just thankful uh, as a whole just to, just to be a part of what we, what, we, what, we were be, you know, what we were able to be a part of. And we got, we got one win, and we tried to get another one. And we fought hard. That's, that's all you can ask for. I'll take the last one here. Coach, I know you've talked to Phil Mayer, SMU Daily Campus. Coach, I know you've talked a lot about your future, but have you been told anything regarding your job status for next year? Uh, uh, it's, it's all good. Yeah, thank you for asking. It's all good. Yeah, appreciate the question, though. How's your status for next year? Is all pretty good? That's great. So we're both in good shape. Thank you. SMU, thank you. Appreciate it.